All right, we're going to reconvene. Uh, the next bill that the committee will be hearing is Bill 21 0095, Labor Trafficking Notice Requirements. For the purpose of requiring certain contractors with the City of Baltimore to place a notice regarding a human trafficking prevention hotline in certain locations, providing that certain contractors may obtain the required human trafficking notices from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Blue Campaign website, providing for certain penalties and generally relating to labor trafficking notice requirements for city contractors. This bill was introduced on June 8th, 2021, and it was sponsored by Councilmember Chris Burnett. I'm gonna open the floor to Councilman Burnett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, sorry, I was trying to get back to the screen. Um, so uh, there were a couple um, follow-up items uh, that we, you know, in the last hearing dis discussed, uh, one of one of which was uh, trying to include uh, this signage in homeless shelters, and what we ultimately ended up landing on was um, that, sorry, I'm trying to put my notes here um, was for for that particular um, uh, item. Uh, we decided that we're just going to introduce uh, a, a, a separate bill, an additional additional bill, um, so that we could uh, address that um, separately. Uh, and so we're going to continue to work with the um, we're going to continue to work with with uh, folks in homeless services and DGS to uh, make it make it work uh, as a as a standalone. Uh, the other item that uh, I'm trying to multitask here, make sure I'm covering everything we needed to cover. Um, the other item was uh, concerns raised by uh, council member um, Costello uh, asking about um, asking about like the, the, the thresholds in the bill. Uh, and I do wanna to apologize to the council member. I was supposed to email him uh, yesterday with the response that we got from uh, from folks in the Office of Civil Rights uh, around that because they were the folks that uh, initiated this bill and uh, I've been working with my office to try and make sure we get get all of the, the, the I's dotted and T's crossed on the bill. Um, <clears throat> and the conversation that I had with them about the thresholds that they uh, came up with for the requirements, essentially, uh, those are entirely based on the city's uh, prevailing wage law. Um, there was, uh, which is any contract essentially over $5,000 uh, lands on uh, prevailing wage requirements. And so they, they felt that that was the best um, and most logical uh, benchmark to uh, attach it to um, in, in summary. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody on the call from that office today um, that maybe wants to elaborate a little bit more on it, um, but essentially that was the answer I got to uh, Councilman Costello's question. Um, and I hope that answers it. I don't know if I think Councilman Costello's on here. Um, but I hope that answers your question. My apologies for not getting you that email. All right, uh, thank you, Councilman Burnett. Uh, the committee will now hear from agency representatives and we're gonna start off with the city's Solicitor's office. Hillary, I don't know if you're talking or not. You're yeah, muted. sure. Um, again, we, you know, we've already had a hearing on this one. Um, we stand by our report. We would approve it with the one suggested amendment we needed and I think we discussed that last time. Uh, can you remind can you remind me what amendment that was? I don't know if we approved that amendment from the last meeting. I'm not sure. It's an amendment to remove lines 10 through 13 on page four of the bill um, so that we can make sure we're just following the, the penalties that we're allowed to do under the charter. So it's just removal of those lines. Otherwise, we would certainly approve the bill for form and legal sufficiency. Got it. Thank you, Hillary. Um, next, we've got the mayor's office of human services. 
That's uh, Mayor's Office of Homeless Services, and we would stand by our previous report to the committee. Thank you. Uh, next, we've got the police department. Good afternoon. For the record, Michelle Wurzberger, Director of Government Affairs for the Baltimore Police Department. Uh, we also stand by our report. We have no objections to this bill. Thank you. Uh, next, we've got the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Nina Thumless with the Mayor's Office of Government Relations. I'm not sure if a member of Monzi was able to join this afternoon, but they do stand by their previous report. Thank you. Uh, uh, next is the Department of Finance. Good afternoon, Mara James, legislative engagement lead with the Department of Finance. We stand by the report and do not oppose this legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. Uh, and last but not least, the Health Department. Good afternoon, Kelly Eastman with the Baltimore City Health Department. Um, the Health Department stands by our report for this bill. Excellent, thank you. Um, and from there, I'll open up to questions if folks have questions of the sponsor or of the departments on this bill. Seeing no questions, uh, Councilman Burnett, uh, are are the amendments ready? Do we have the amendments? We do not have the amendments. Yeah, I think we dropped the ball on that one. Um, I'm looking through my emails and just called my staff. Um, we did commit to amending out that uh, technical. We did commit to the technical amendment that the law department was requesting, um, but I dropped the ball on getting that drafted, at least from what I can find in my emails. I can't find that we ever actually sent that over to DLR. Now, I will note, and obviously the committee can decide how we wanna proceed. Uh, it's a very technical amendment that um, we can offer at second read if we do wanna move this forward. Um, I, I, you know, happy to follow your your lead and law department's lead on that, um, but we can, we can do it that way. It's just removing a line from their report. I'll just read it out for the record. Um, they are basically saying that we need to take uh, section 26A-5 on page 4, lines 10 through 13 must be deleted from the bill because the mayor and city council is only authorized to impose civil and criminal uh, fines and penalties, uh, and they reference the, the charter there. Other than that, um, they're, again, it's, it's very technical. I have no objections to it, uh, but I do not have it ready today, uh, unfortunately, and I apologize to the committee for that. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Councilman Burnett, there are no other known amendments at the moment, right? Okay. We're going to see if we can pull it up. Um, So we're going to try and pull up the law department report so that we have the language at the very least. All right, so uh, as you see in the, the final second to last uh, paragraph, it says, however, an amendment is needed, section 26A-5 on page 4, lines 10, to 10 through 13 must be deleted from the bill because the Mayor and City Council is only authorized to impose. So this is the only amendment we have up for considerations. Any questions from folks in the committee about that amendment? Uh, I'll, I'll allow us to consider that, even though it's not yet drafted by DLR. I think it's a very technical amendment and can be um, at least considered here. Any questions? Uh, Councilman Ramos. So, 
so just to understand, we're taking out the, the paragraph that talks about that the prime contractor can, um, if a prime contractor fails to comply, um, and then we're keeping everything else in. So we still have the environmental control board piece. Hillary, I'll defer to you on yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's correct, Council. Okay, I just wanted to be transparent about that for myself and also the public. Um, so, Mr. Chair, I mean, I, I'm happy to move the bill and uh, with the provision that we would put in the amendments on second reader. All right, so we'll do that. We, um, I feel comfortable doing that. Um, Councilman Burnett, if you can make sure that we get those drafted for second reader, I think I feel comfortable moving on this. Uh, I, we, while you've been sitting here, I've just emailed DLR. Um, and I'll make sure it gets to the law department the second I get it, and I'll pump it out to the committee and full council ASAP. Perfect. All right. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to move the bill as drafted. Move we'll do the it. bill with the provision that we have the amendments on second reader. All right. We got a motion from Councilman Ramos. A second. And a second from Councilman uh, Burnett. Uh, Conway, yes. Burnett. Yes. Uh, Cohen. Yes. Costello. Yes. Glover. Yes. Uh, Porter is in excused absence and Ramos. Yes. All right. Uh, this will move to second reader and we'll have that um, that amendment, the technical amendment for the second reader available. Uh, with that, any closing statements um, from the sponsor, Councilman Burnett? Um, uh, thank you all uh, again for continuing to uh, be good partners uh, on this work of labor trafficking and human trafficking in Baltimore City. Uh, as stated, we'll have another bill coming that'll focus more on the homeless shelter uh, work. Uh, and I did, I did want to flag, I think it did go out to the committee, uh, but we did get a letter of support also from the state's attorney's office for this, um, but I, I think you all should have gotten that. So again, thank you all, uh, as always, for continuing to help move this issue forward and uh, help victims of human trafficking in Baltimore. Thank you. Uh, this hearing is adjourned and see you guys all next week, probably. <laughs> have a good one.